first of all, I love the film. And I have become one of your biggest advocates, telling everyone you need to go out and watch this film. And what I love so much about it is that I didn't realize how central Harriet's faith was to everything that she did. I mean, and I've been to divinity school. I'm like, I don't recall a class on her, her being really a giant of the faith. And so, Casey, my question to you is how important was that for you to portray that part of her life ad adequately, and then how did that, I know you're a woman of faith, how did that impact your faith playing her? Yeah, well, when I did the research, I did uh, tons of research, and, and in the process of doing the research, it became perfectly clear that you would absolutely be omitting something from her story if you didn't include it. It was so much a part of her story that I felt that it must be included, and um, even though it's somewhat intimidating to deal with portraying issues of faith that are that strong, mm -hmm. you know, that somebody's having visions from God, right. um, I felt that um, it was kind of a cop-out not to. I had to take her point of view. She really believed it. And, um, and you know, I, I took her point of view and, and, and tried to look through her eyes. Well, for me, I guess it was a bit of a gift, really, because in this business, sometimes you'd be, you, you can be a little bit embarrassed about sharing your faith and, and, and speaking about it. And what this allowed for me to do was to explore it, um, to look deeper into what I believed and to sort of, I guess, be more active in it um, in order to, to play her, in order to get on set every day. I needed to wake up and I needed to pray every morning and I needed to ask for the space to be safe for her to come in. I needed to make sure that we were all safe. I needed to ask for those things because I felt like it prepared me to tell the story. Um, and what that, meant that, uh, what that meant for me is that I had an active relationship with God every morning, every day. Um, and so now that's continued because in the talking about her, we get to talk about her faith and it means I get to talk about mine. So what that's done is just open up um, the doors for me to explore what that is and what my relationship is to it. Yeah, it's awesome. kind of awesome. That is awesome, yeah. I love that, I love yeah. that. And a part of that faith too was the use of music, spirituals, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I loved how you depicted that as not just songs, but as coded yeah. communication. Yes. You know, just speaking until I'm going to be here, don't go there, mm -hmm. and all of that. I, I don't recall seeing that in any kind of film that way, so why did you decide to do that? And I know you would use, you said it was Harriet's voice, yeah. not your own. How were you able to sort of call upon her voice? Well, that, this is also part of the Harriet Tubman story. Mm -hmm. These are the songs she actually sang. Mm -hmm. And this, this was her call to the enslaved people, okay, I'm here, are you coming, you know? And so um, you can't do the story without it. Yeah, um, and I guess we, Casey and I would speak about where we wanted to place the voice. I knew that I didn't want it to sound like me, my voice. I, I knew that we, we had to find something that fit who she was, that fit the gravitas of her, that fit the, the, uh, the need for the moment. I, I wanted to take out all performance in it because it wanted to feel like pure communication. A real, I am telling you something, but I cannot say it, so I'm going to sing it, as opposed to I'm singing a story to mm -hmm. you, which is a wonderful thing, but there's something more urgent about having to communicate something to someone mm -hmm. and tell someone something. Mm -hmm. And so we would explore what that was, and uh, I guess we kind of settled on something that felt deep, um, was more alto than soprano, mm -hmm. and more urgent and pure mm -hmm. than you would normally hear. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Good luck with thank everything you, and God bless. You, so you got lucky, Harriet. I made a diss for all my own. So don't you tell me what I can't do. So I know you play William Steele in here. He was a very important person on the Underground Railroad. Civil rights advocate, writer and all of that. But I don't think he's really that well known to people. So as you, you know, were pre preparing for this role, what is something that you wanted to really come across to viewers that they may not have known? Um, well, I, I knew about it. Having grown up in Philadelphia, I knew about his work with the Underground Railroad. What I didn't know, and what viewers still may not know after this movie, was all the chapters before his work with the Underground Railroad started. So I hope that people are intrigued by him and, and go and read up on him on their own. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, that was a sophisticated network of, there were there were a whole lot of people that were risking their lives and everything they had um, to see to it that if people wanted to, if 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 you wanted, if you had the courage and you had the will that you could you could make it uh, to freedom, it was an impossible choice that slavery put black people under. It was impossible decisions. Absolutely, and like I said, I'm a Christian network. So one thing that struck me about this film is that Harriet's faith. And so I know at one point in the film, you know, 
steals rights, possible brain damage. But as she continued to be successful, do you think that that kind of impacted his sort of belief in, in all of that? Oh, for sure. I mean, I th how could it not? You know, he was, <clears throat> she was an extraordinary woman, extraordinary American. And so, yeah, I think that she, she changed the lives of everybody that she met. <clears throat> not just the 700 people she helped directly, um, but I think seeing her do the impossible, the seemingly impossible again and again, how could it not affect him and change his life? And that, and that thing that, you know, you're talking about her connection, her connection with God, with higher power, you know, people call that a lot of things, you know, uh, the, the God inside you, it's your intuition, it's your instincts, it's the hairs that stand up on the back of your neck, the hairs that stand up on your arm when you sense danger when you sense goodness. I mean, that's certainly what I want to teach my daughter about. Right. My parents taught me about it. It's, you know, it's maybe the greatest little thing that we come here with, instinct, your intuition. Right, absolutely. Now, this isn't your first time playing a historical figure. Mm -hmm. You originated the role of Aaron Burr in Hamilton. So what's, like, would you say it's harder to play a historical figure versus a fictional character? Are the stakes different? Yeah, it's harder. <laughs> it's harder right. because because you have to start with the facts of their life. You you really really start with all those little details. I mean, if I was you know if somebody's gonna play you or play me, a whole lot they gotta catch up on. Mm -hmm. They gotta you know catch up on where you know to to this point. Whereas you know when I'm playing uh, a character that's made up. You know, I, I'm as much the author of their life as anybody else, so I can fill in the blanks how I wish. But you, you know, with these with real people, you, the responsibility is different, and you you really feel that. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you.